I'm going on a mini rant. <laughs> to me, thing, brother. to me, it's crazy to say because Jordan Poole, the, the, the Warriors literally do not win the, the title in 2022 <clears throat> without Jordan Poole. He's a very, very key player in that series. Key player in that entire playoff run. So much so that you then went to sign him to a four-year, $123 million contract extension. So between then and now, equivalent value is Chris Paul. It just, there's just no way. There's no way. I think anybody who has watched Jordan Poole play, has watched the Warriors play, who has the context on their situation, obviously knowing what happened between him and Draymond in the offseason, no one thinks Jordan Poole is that bad of a player. Right. People have down years. People have down series. He had two down series. <laughs> Granted, they looked really bad. He was basically unplayable for them in that King series and definitely unplayable in the Lakers series. I don't think he's a bad basketball player. He's still young, right? Guy was in the G League still. It's only been like two seasons removed from that happening. Um, so to trade him away, A, I think this is like completely marked the end of this double time. I don't want to hear nothing about this double timeline for the Warriors ever again. It's over. Yeah, no, that's done. That's completely done. Over. They completely ruined it. Like, you have Wiseman, Kaminga, Jordan Poole, Moses Moody. Moses Moody is the last man standing. Yeah. Jordan, the reports are saying Kaminga is going to get moved too. Mm. At this point, there's no point keeping him, right? You already have gone so old with what you're doing, bringing in Chris Paul. Just, just try to win now. Your best bet is to move Kaminga to somebody that you can get more veterans who can play for you right now. Because 100%. what we saw last year, Kaminga can't play in the playoffs, according to Steve Kerr. He couldn't get minutes. Wasn't ready. Right. So to say that you feel like you needed a shift – that means that you really did not do a good job of nurturing that part of the timeline. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing to do. It's very difficult, but that's also something that's very rare. Very rare do you have a team that can win a championship and also at the same time teams around the league are like, man, look at the young pieces that they have. In a couple of years, we'll have to worry about a core of Jordan Poole and James Wiseman and Moses Moody, and Jonathan Kaminga. That could be something serious. Y'all had that with Steph, Clay, and Dre on the team, and Wiggins all at the same time. We completely botched it. Terribly botched it. <laughs> completely botched it. It's, it's, it's insane. But honestly, um, I just want to take a second. I'm really happy for Chris Paul, Brian. I love seeing people beat their addictions. He was addicted to being in the finals. And... <laughs> He beat that. He beat that addiction. So I'm happy for Chris Paul because they're not doing anything. They're not. This doesn't move the needle. This isn't a move that gets them over the hump. They weren't even They're. I don't. They were a second round exit team that had no way of really getting a lot better. And they're not close. Like they lost easily to the team that got swept by the champion. So it's like you're not even close. Like you're you're nowhere, you're not close. You don't have guys that's gonna get better because you traded them away. You're gonna trade away Kaminga. So it's not like you're gonna have guys that are like 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 the Kings, right? We talked about the Kings. They lost in the first round. But we me and you can both agree that they're gonna get better. They're gonna get more experience, like they can right. move on further. The Warriors are a bunch of old guys that are on the decline. Besides Steph, Steph seems like he's playing the best basketball of his career. But mm -hmm. Draymond's on the decline. Clay's on Clay's looks he he doesn't look like he could be a number two on the championship team anymore. Clay's on the decline. You got Wiggins, who he's still a, a good player, but he's just going to stay where he's at. You know what I mean? He's not going to improve. He's not going to decline. He's just going to stay where he's at. And then you trade away your young guys for Chris Paul, who, one, you're getting older. You need – their problem in the playoffs was you guys were small. You guys were too small. You've gotten older. You've gotten smaller. smaller. <laughs> and then yeah. you've gotten slower when you're a fast-paced team. How does yeah. that make sense? The only thing that makes sense is – him coming off the bench and he can help out in the minutes that Curry's on the bench. Okay, that's fine. 
you're still going to lose the game. It does not matter to me. Like this move, uh, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't move me. It doesn't move me. I'm not going to say they got a lot worse because like you said, Jordan Poole was unplayable. So I'm not saying that they got like way worse, but it just doesn't make them way better. It doesn't make them a championship level team. I don't mm-hmm. see them competing. And to to talk about what you said about how they had the the dynasty, the old dynasty, and then they had the young players and had that that timeline the same basically. Do you feel like that can't work, or that they just ruined that so bad? I think they genuinely messed it up. So I think it can be done. Like, there's have we no... seen that before? Let me think, because I'm trying to think of any ways that. Like we've seen like teams that really were competing for championships also kind of like put together a young core at the same time. I can't, I definitely can't think of any example that was as drawn out and talked about as this one. Cause it was mm-hmm. so, and it was just such a rare circumstance where you have a team that in 2019 makes the finals would probably win the finals. If Kevin Durant doesn't tear his Achilles and Clay Thompson doesn't tear his ACL. Right. Those two, Bad injuries happen, right? They lose the finals. KD leaves. Clay is then out for two years because he also tears his, tears his Achilles on top of the ACL. Steph, when he broke his hand or his wrist, right? Mm-hmm. So they had the year where it was Draymond and a bunch of the young guys, and they were absolutely awful. They get in the lottery. They take Wiseman. The next year, they have another lottery pick. They take Kaminga. They take Moody. And it's like you still had you had Jordan Poole already at that point. It's like out of nowhere, you get Clay back. Now you have Wiggins, Draymond is back, Steph is healthy. You put your core back together, but you just basically like had like two out of nowhere rebuilding seasons to get great talent. And I think Kaminga's a good pick. I think Moses Moody's a good pick. Jordan Poole, you know, developed phenomenally in the G League and kind of had his splash on the scene moment. I don't think Wiseman ever got that opportunity really in Golden State. Like, so to me, the opportunities for development outside of what Jordan Poole did has not really come to fruition. Like James Wiseman never got great opportunities at, and part of it again was just like, you drafted a center like him who you knew was a project and who you knew needs post touches and you know just has to have the ball in his hands to be effective that's not how you run your offense so when is he right. ever going to get that time to develop exactly and so then when it doesn't pan out you traded him to the pistons and got back gary payton who was on the roster last right. year who you let go <laughs> right so <laughs> you didn't want to didn't think you could afford him couldn't pay him but then trade back for him so that was like, you literally just gave him away. Mm-hmm. If Wiseman pans out to be any type of decent, that's so. If he pans out to be decent, it's bad. If he pans out to be bad, it's still bad because you drafted him number two. There's no, it's a lose lose situation for Golden State. Exactly. On top of that, Kaminga, who has had flashes in the past of just being a very productive player for them, when he's been on the court in games, he's had flashes of great defense, great cutting good shooting, just his athleticism pops when you watch them play. And he's getting – Iguodala's in his ear. Draymond is in his ear. He can just continue to develop and be coaches, give him the minutes. He's going to make mistakes, right? It's what the regular season is for, right? You all are a championship-level team. You can go through the West. You know it's a gauntlet. You've done it four times already. So – You can definitely do both at the same time. But when you draft a center that doesn't fit and you don't give him minutes, that's a problem. When you have Kaminga and you're not giving him as much development as he needs and he's getting frustrated with his playing time and now it's rumor that he's about to be on the move too, that's a problem, especially when Iguodala is now retired, Draymond is getting older, like he could have fit into those roles very nicely in a couple of years. Jordan Poole gets punched in the face by Draymond Green. Draymond doesn't get suspended. He has a a horrible playoff run, regression from how he played the year prior. 
after you just gave him 120 mil and now you just traded him for Chris Paul. And so Kaminga gets moved. It's really just Moses Moody that, that is left in Golden State after this double timeline. You just cash in it. I don't even, you didn't even cash in on the second timeline. Because like I just said, they turned James Wiseman and Jordan Poole into Gary Payton the second and Chris Paul. That's not even a cash in. Oh, that's so bad when you look at it from that aspect. That's so bad. <laughs> that's bro, you, so that's bad. not even a cash unless they're able to turn Kaminga into like two quality vets. Like you even just, then, like, even then, if you don't away. win the championship, if you don't win the championship, then what what are those vets bringing you? So it's this not going to matter a, regardless. Like this is a lose, almost guaranteeing to be a lose lose situation because, like you said, I don't think this is a championship team with Chris Paul. Absolutely not. I think Chris Paul is still a very capable NBA player, but like you said, Golden State is one of the most fast-paced. They play chaotic basketball. Chris Paul is one of the slowest-paced, methodical players we've ever seen, especially in today's game. That's a clash. Chris they barely Paul, run pick and roll. It doesn't. It just doesn't. It doesn't fit. It, it right. really just doesn't fit. That's I'm very I, interested to see how they're going to run him together, and if they do this small ball lineup. With Chris Paul, Steph, Clay, oh Wiggins, God. and Draymond, who's That's rebounding? Food. Who's who's guarding the rim? That's food. Oh my! Who's God. guarding can... the perimeter? I'm gonna say who's guarding the ball. <laughs> They're getting to... bro. If I see bro, Chris Paul and Curry and Clay at this, Clay's not a great defender at this point. Yeah, the only defend oh the best defender they got is Wiggins, and he's one of the tallest guys in that lineup. So you can't just put him on ball. Is he bro, taller is... than Draymond? Wiggins is like six eight. Draymond, yeah. <laughs> Draymond six yeah. seven. Draymond's like six seven, bro. That's stop it, bro. They cannot run that lineup, and that's why I don't get it from Chris Paul's point. Like, all right, let's talk about he Chris Paul for a second. Ball. This guy, he wants to win a ring, but you know you're not gonna start. And if you do start, that that starting lineup is getting torched. Like they're not gonna guard anybody. They're getting it's mismatches literally everywhere. Yep. You he, he's not gonna start. You can come off the bench. Okay, you're gonna give good minutes. You can't close games because closing games is gonna be Steph. Obviously, it's gonna be Wiggins. It's gonna be Draymond. It's gonna be Clay. And then it's gonna be that small ball lineup that you're talking about. You're gonna get torched. So you're like, you're not gonna start. You're not gonna close games. So like, even if you win a ring, because there people are gonna look at it like, okay, you won a ring as like a a role, like a backup center. Like you didn't really have a huge. You can have an impact, but you're not gonna have this. Same impact as if you were to win a ring in Phoenix or the Rockets. I guess it's not going to be the same. So it's mm-hmm. like, I just feel like, I don't know how much say so he had into this. I know he just wanted to go to contender. I didn't really hear anything about like he wanted to go to the Warriors, but if he could have chose where he wanted to go, I think the Warriors were, were a bad pick. I feel like there's plenty of other places that he could have went for less money, definitely less money, but there's other places that he could have went where he could have, actually competed for a championship and even had a bigger impact. So, Boston. Boston. I know the Clippers are super injury prone, but I mean the Clippers even like I just feel like the Warriors that 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 wasn't the pick. That wasn't that was not the right team for Chris Paul. I think I've already reached a point where I, I pretty much just think he's not gonna win a ring in his career. It's so like if yeah. it happens it's great. If it doesn't like it's not gonna sway what I think about Chris Paul. So to that point, like, like you said, I just, I don't think it makes him a contender. I think there's still question marks with this roster and it like, it doesn't even have to get more complicated than this. The reigning champion of the NBA is a team that is engine behind a legitimate seven foot center right now, outside of Kevon Looney, your next tallest player is Andrew Wiggins. Y'all are not equipped to beat who just won the title last year. We don't even need to get into any of the other bigs that you might. Let's say you managed to beat Denver. There's multiple teams out east. The Bucks have Giannis. The Celtics now have KP and Jason Tatum. The the Sixers have Embiid. There's a lot of size that you are going to face, even if by some miraculous run you're able to beat Denver next year. There's size in the league, and they are not equipped to deal with that. 
And I, I think I said this a couple episodes ago. People have started to get critical of Steve Kerr saying that his number one big adjustment is just put Draymond at the five. Let's go small. <laughs> that can't be the adjustment every time. It's not, it's, that, not, it's not the same NBA, bro. It's not the same than when y'all could have did that years ago. It's not the same. Bigs bro. are a lot more versatile than they were when you when you had Bogut as your five. And it was like, yeah. out of nowhere, Draymond's at the five. And you're sitting here torching guys like Demonis Monte Yunus in the playoffs, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, it's not the same, bro. It's not the same. People are much more equipped to stop small ball lineups. Because a lot of teams tried to emulate what you did for better or for worse. So mm-hmm. teams got hit to having to stop these kind of lineups on a night in night out basis. So I- I'm interested to see what they do to fill out their roster. But as it stands right now, this does not really, if anything, from an unbiased perspective, I think Jordan Poole just keeping it makes more sense. I think it does as well. Makes I a ton know. more sense. I can't wait to watch him, what he do with the Wizards. I really, like, bro, I be joking. I be like, bro, he's about to average 30. I genuinely, like, really think he's about to average, like, 27 points per game. Like, I think he's, like, I think he's he's going to have the green light. And they, the biggest thing, they don't want to win. So, like, they don't <laughs> care if you go out there and chug. He's really, bro, the highlights, I'm telling you right now, his, like, end of season highlights are going to look like prime Kyrie Irving. Like, he's going to look ridiculous. Like, he's going to go off. I can't wait. They're going to lose every game. And I'm gonna just watch him go crazy. He's gonna play the Warriors, and he's gonna give them fifty. <laughs> he's they crazy. might lose by twenty. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, giving lose, them he's giving them fifty. He's bro. He's taking thirty shots, bro. I, I can't wait. That's gonna be fun. 